right, so we should be live right now. Should be live. So oh, that's like all right. Yeah, it yeah, looks okay. like okay, we're coming good. back on. There we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Sorry about that. Uh, on the upside, for once, the tech issues aren't the fault of streamers. Uh, like it's nobody here having their computer fail. Uh, but we are dealing with some stability issues. Uh, it's on on Discord's end. Uh, I believe Erica said it was. Uh, they're dealing with some hacker shenanigans today. Um, so it's just scheduling on our part. Um, so we're going to backtrack. Quick recap. Uh, Kingsguard Knight Sir Marin Trant, who is kind of a sexist douchebag, even by Westerosi standards. Uh, he <laughs> got whooped by Lady Bela the Badass uh, in the joust the other day. Um, and he is giving Bela dirty looks. Uh, from his station across the room. Uh, Bela is responding uh, with a jaunty little toast and an easy clap uh, in order to just uh, <laughs> very sarcastically salute him as he is standing guard dog far away from all the food. She's like, oh, this wine is so tasty, like your sexist tears. And he goes, no, no, no. With this salad that is the fourth course of this feast you're not getting. Uh, so she is <laughs> kind of, kind of, you know, snarking right back at him. Uh, Maya Stone kind of took a second to, to kind of grok what was going on. Miranda Royce was overjoyed. And she was like, oh, Bela, you're so naughty for, uh, I think, what was it? You don't have to uh, be mean to the boys after you beat them at their own game. Oh, but it's just adorable that you do. Uh, so Miranda is clearly loving it. Um, it's not often she gets to see uh, the kind of chivalrous, sexist code stuff get flipped on its head like this. And she seems to be enjoying it. Yeah, he has quite the reputation amongst the ladies here in King's Landing. Oh, she looks very kind of faux innocent. But I thought the Kingsguard were sworn to father no children. I thought so too, but it seems some don't take too seriously to that, um, to that order. Plus, I hear it's not mm. just father no children. I hear he's rather cruel to the women as well. Well, that is no fun unless you ask for it very nicely first. <laughs> that's, not, that's not very chivalrous of him. I mean, there are ways to keep from fathering children, but she sighs uh, a little, a little melodramatically. Clearly, they don't always happen. Uh, Maya is pointedly very quiet during uh, that exchange, rather than letting it. Uh, and she's still very red, uh, but you don't know if it's just holdover blushing from the prior conversation. Um, uh, but yeah, Miranda seems to be just having a great time. Uh, violating social norms by talking shit uh, about uh, a knight of the king's guard that got beat up by a girl. Yeah. Um, any comment from Reyna? You're you're right there, and probably easy to notice the uh, the scorn roiling off of Marin Trant like Superman's heat vision, mm. only harmless. I just give him just. A smug little smirk. <laughs> you know, the bitchy one. <laughs> oh, I do. We've been married almost 14 years. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, again, not a lot to necessarily work with the Mary Trant, but gives you some stuff to work with in the group, at least, as you are uh, sitting at the table. Um, and then I believe we had a five mm -hmm. uh, which is Lord Peter Baelish uh, master of coin and currently one of the uh, I swear conversational I I've not seen that list I'm not... <laughs> one of, <laughs> one of the conversational dinner partners of, uh, of young uh, Baelish has a pretty well honed animosity radar uh, so we're actually going to riff off of Marin Trant's ugly look. And also, as a member of the small council, he spends a lot of time around the Kingsguard compared to most Westerosi. So he might have 
heard them grouching uh, in the meantime. So he actually, he makes a point of kind of politely leaning across the table, uh, which is shorthand for like, oh, I'm about to gossip a little. It doesn't actually keep anybody from overhearing, but it's just right. kind of a signifier. He goes, I can't help but notice, young Adam, uh, that the Wyvern's Rest contingent has done rather well for themselves against their hosts here in the Red Keep. Uh, a member of the King's Guard beaten by your ward, another member of the King's Guard beaten by your sister under the King's own watchful gaze, uh, and then I seem to recall the King's own squire and that of my liege lord John Aaron being beaten by your rather robust young squire that you brought. <clears throat> Tell me, uh, other members of the small council need to be worried about you, should we? Well, cer certainly not if you uh, want to play some bets on us. <laughs> but no, no. I we're did. Just, we're, we're, we're like, like any uh, young up-and-comers, we are here to establish ourselves in friendship it's friendly competition surely he, he gives a a pointed look over your shoulder uh towards the tyrells by your reckoning he goes you certainly seem to have established a few friendships uh and done rather well for yourself uh with the the wagering too i believe i overheard well um magister magister illyrio has been most gracious in giving the old oh. tip in there. <laughs> I'm sure he has. Well, no doubt that's the reason for your uh, your recent interest in fiscal matters. Uh, with sums like that to suddenly worry about investing in, it's very responsible of you to, uh, to increase your attentiveness to such matters. Uh, though every copper piece is important, uh, the more of them you're dealing with, the more you need to be aware of your your options in investment. Well, I want to do right by my house, so yes, the I'm here to learn. But your your advice has been very valuable. How charmingly dutiful of you. And do note that flattery works famously well on members of the small council. Should you <laughs> interact with any of the rest of us? Good to know. Good to know. Uh, Lynn Corbray continues to be kind of a uh, cool guy, disinterested. Uh, he's not terribly close with his older brother, the lord of their house. Uh, you remember hearing that they had kind of a split because Lady Forlorn went to Lynn while the Lordship went to his brother, neither of them ended up happy about it. But thinking about Lynn and his brothers, you do also remember hearing that his younger brother died on the road on the way down here to King's Landing. Uh, that was why oh. part, of, part of the Vale contingent was late because the big group of them, the road washed out kind of in the middle of their caravan so Corbray and them got here early. The rest of them had to like backtrack and go a different route. But his brother died, and you can't help but notice he doesn't seem to be terribly bothered by it. Like he at least hasn't been emoting about it uh, very much. He hasn't. He's got like two emotions that he emotes, <laughs> and it's like scorn <laughs> and sexiness. <laughs> <laughs> So just, uh, just the well known emotion is sexy. Yeah, yeah, those are the two. That's his that's his, his spectrum is from scorn to smolder. Uh is, yeah. is which yeah. Um, like, but, but yeah, I mean, like, just uh Is George R. R. Martin I, re I refuse to believe that like there's literally nothing else to him. So I'm but it's you know uh, Adam can fix him. He just needs a I good man. I don't know about that. I don't know if he can fix him. <laughs> he can fix him. So I try. Um, but yeah. Oh. So I mean, yeah, like I said. That's def that's def that is definitely not a thing that Adam is going to be really careful to not refer to that. Like when people are around, that's like, that would be a really bad idea. 
Right. Because I already uh, came very close to just getting shanked in the face, like right at the start of that interaction. Yeah. So just uh, just a reminder that it's it would seem on notions of familial duty and sibling uh, care and affection for one another, he is just as disinterested as he is with talk of managing a realm, uh, and that it's just things don't seem to hold his attention uh, with the conversation that is that is going on. At yeah, present, guess, so he's just he's just sitting there looking sexy, uh, and not saying much. So, I guess I guess like I mean he was paying close attention to Lord Baelish when Adam turned up at the table. So I guess a thing that Adam might do is um, kind of try and guide the conversation to the kind of stuff they were talking about, and sort of see what happens. Um, you know, try, kind of try and like. You know, like get them onto things that like that the three of us can actually participate in. You get the feeling it was mostly veil politicking, so you could try to dabble yeah. in that a bit. But yeah. it is going to be a little outside your bailiwick, uh, as the veil isn't mm-hmm. somewhere you've been or yeah. paid super attention to. But but, but you know what, yeah. like Adam is interested in the world in general, and yeah, I guess it can ask about like what things in the veil are like sure uh so you're, you're definitely able to to still take part in the conversation uh but there's a definite shift in who is steering it i guess if, the, if that explanation yeah. makes it you're you're not as active in like answering questions or building on answers that are given uh it's definitely a little more of a kind of questiony thing but uh and again you get the idea that for Lynn Corbray, he's actually being fairly sociable uh, with you. You know, he's not threatening to cut you uh, extra and, you know, stuff like that. So, extra? Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> like it's going pretty well. So he's already going to cut yeah. me a little bit. Just just a normal amount. Just the gonna, usual. Like, so he's not going to, like, rip me in half. <laughs> I just um, want to mention that Raina has noticed that Adam's conversation has shifted to be more towards Valish and that I approve. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't I, get used to it. Don't get I just, used to it. Yeah, I'm just saying. I noticed it and I think it's yeah. a good... Yeah, I mean, right. Like, I, I don't think Adam will be... has enough kind of like, control over his expression to not still be like giving that kind of look um and that's fine. towards Lynn. Like particularly when he speaks, um, because Adam finds him rather hypnotic. But yeah, like I mean, he is kind of trying to be a kind of deft conversationalist and is kind of growing in confidence at that, but especially because it's going quite well. Um but yeah, I mean there's there's still gonna be a like a kind of um a, a a look of interest uh anyway like of yeah i'm conscious that the conversation that we were having that was this particular mood was interrupted by this dude turning up i'm not done with that other mood by the way but we can't talk about that right now <laughs> so it's, it's good to know that, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah uh like it's adam like, is it's, very it's, clearly it's, still thirsty but he <laughs> also likes me yeah, that's well, fine. It was, I just well, it was basically it was like um like last session, like what Adam was kind of saying with the like the king's peace like kind of maintains us for now. So Lady Forlorn isn't gonna like maybe isn't gonna taste Dornish blood for a little while yet. Was was very much a veiled like we we can't be like overtly suggestive with each other like at the moment because the we're in the king's court, but with some patience there may be like a taste of some dornish for you swords might not be all that gets unsheathed if the night goes well no it, like all the sword talk as far as adam is concerned was euphemism all of it uh not all of it yeah <laughs> just to be clear it. lynn corbray being lynn corbray uh it's no. not all no, euphemism but, like uh, a, but... like quite a bit of it was was very suggestive yeah no like if 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 adam wants to tell himself that it was all euphemism that's fine but it was like a 70 no. split 
There was there no, was a no, percentage I, of it that really was about stabbing you. No, no, I, I mean like, certainly like er, earlier on, definitely just talking about swords, but it yeah. kind of started gravitating. Um, it very so much did. Like, yes. Y- yeah. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't quite filleting the sword hilt, uh, no. but but that was probably <laughs> next. Uh, yes. So there was there was definitely some some suggestive uh, stuff going on. Um, but I just want to make it clear to everybody listening, Lynn Corbray is never 100% not talking about murder. Uh, he is a big fan of killing people with swords. Uh, so often it is about, about poking people with something else, but sometimes it's always a little bit about poking them also with a sword. Um, speaking, uh, I, there's really no cool transition from that. Uh, so was, speaking of poking people, up at the king's table, um, while these salads are out, uh, Luke, you are able to uh, approach uh, John Aaron, the hand of the king. Uh, and my assumption, like we're going to bounce this back a little bit to the Stannis uh, number that came up recently. You do pointedly walk up on them while they're clearly kind of having a private discussion in as much as discussions at this sort of dinner are private. But you see John Aaron's kind of, he's leaning over his armrest and talking. uh, And then he goes, you know, like, oh, like just one second, Stan. It's like, here comes someone, you know? And it's not like a big shh, shh, shh. You know, they're not gaudy about it because it is the king's fucking brother and the hand of the king. Mm -hmm. So like, they can talk about motherfuckers if they want to. Like, they don't have to actually feel bad for it. you know, but it's not like a huge deal. But they pointedly stop their their murmuring uh, as you arrive, uh, and John Aaron uh, gives you a a close lipped smile, which you have spent enough time here in King's Landing and specifically the Red Keep. Um, you know that he's a little sensitive about opening his mouth. He has pretty famously bad teeth, um, so he's uh, conscious of that uh, and gives kind of fatherly smiles uh, without showing them. Um, but it seems like a, as pleasant and sincere a smile as he's given anyone, uh, he's a pretty good dude. Uh, he was always, you know, as you're squiring for anyone in the Red Keep, you're kind of squiring for everyone in the Red Keep, and he's always been, you know, pretty cool with you, and, and he was there at your knighting ceremony. Uh, didn't have to show up, but did, you know, stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, he just kind of gives you a, a friendly look and, and raises an eyebrow. And, ah, uh, well, young I'll, sir, uh, Luke Harris. Um, Lord Aaron, uh, do you mind if I sit for a moment? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, Luke will I... sit down and uh, begin to have uh, uh, the, the, um, the final kind of the chorus that's here and then talk with him briefly, just kind of small talk for a few moments. Yeah, and it's it's pleasant small talk. It's you know it's uh, good to see you back in the Red Keep. Uh, we you know we've missed you this week though. Clearly, you've been busy with your family, uh, and like Stannis right next to him has included himself in the conversation, uh, and he's looking like right over your head uh, towards Oris. He goes, and, and John Aaron's like busy with your family, and Stannis is like, and some others. In that very Stenisian way, <laughs> I'm like, gonna turn to him and uh, books, right? Yeah. Uh, he's like, yes, and some others. I'm gonna turn to him and go. That reminds me, uh, Lord Stannis. Thank you for allowing my siblings to participate in a writing contest, despite not following the proper procedures. He waves off your gratitude like he waves off every positive and negative emotion, uh, and he just. Meh. It was only fair, given the way the Florence let chaos overwhelm uh, the squiring tables, uh, and given that your your boy there wasn't able to handle things due to, uh, what was it, phrase, I believe? Some manner of nonsense like that, yes. But, yes, uh, it was no trouble to let her ride, and certainly no less unorthodox than letting her joust in the first place. Uh, John, yes, Aaron, uh... John Aaron cuts in with, the Dornish customs are not our own. 
but we are seven kingdoms, not six. Uh, so it has been a, a rare pleasure to, to see your sister tilt, uh, for most of us, at least. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe not all in the Red Keep have shared in our enjoyment. Um, not all in the Red Keep are appreciative as of such strong women as we are in Dorne. Uh, the Princess Marcella was quite thrilled uh, to hear that your sister got as far as she did. Uh, jousting tends to not hold her attention well, so she has sent her apologies rather than her attention uh, to the most of her name day joust, but she was quite thrilled to hear uh, that your sister did well. I will pass it on to her. She'd be happy to hear that. I do hope the princess is doing well. Uh, yes, her her mother was feeling a bit unwell this evening. Uh, and again, given your passive awareness, you notice John Aaron, who's good at statecraft, his gaze just flicks over to Maya Stone um, when he says that Cersei was feeling unwell. He says, yes, uh, her, uh, her mother was feeling unwell this evening, and uh, Marcella and the other children uh, have gentle hearts, uh, and they are keeping their mother in good spirits uh, by uh, keeping her company in her chambers. Uh, Marcella and Tomlin have always seemed to be sweet children, I understand. Food, company, parties don't always agree with everybody. I'll give them kind of a knowing nod. Um, Stannis's gaze doesn't flick anywhere, uh, Stannis being Stannis. Um, if he picks up on the shade you're throwing at Joffrey, he doesn't mind. Um, but he pointedly looks... Oh, was I throwing from... shade? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He pointedly looks from Oris over kind of your other shoulder to Maya Stone. He goes, yes, uh, the queen and most of her kin seem to have retired early for the evening. Uh, but such things happen, I suppose. Uh, the Westerlands are uh, emotional folk, I, I suppose. Uh, some say spoiled compared to the sterner stuff of the Stormlands. Oh, well, you know us Stormlands folk have a uh reputation for being passionate as well so I don't fault them um, do you mind if we take a brief walk The um, well, I'm afraid I enjoyed a little too much of the wine from home and I, I, I could use some air I'd like to speak to you about a subject uh, John Aaron quirks an eyebrow kind of curiously he goes uh, sure. some, uh, some night air before the fish arrives doesn't sound amiss uh, and he very kind of kind of formally excuses himself uh, from Lord Stannis on one side and from his lady wife uh, on the other. Um, and uh, yeah, you are able to take, it's a, like you don't have to go all the way out into the gardens and stuff because um, for our intents and purposes, the Red Keep is designed for politicking. Right. So you're able to go to like a small balcony uh, overlooking the, the gardens, you know, for a, a closer uh, sort of talk. And he steers you there. Uh, that is the more, uh, this is likely to not last very long, I hope, uh, way to guide somebody to a private conversation instead of all the way out into the gardens. Um, do you want to continue that conversation now? Or shall we move on to uh, let's, uh, a break let's... and then the conversation? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so uh, we are cheerfully making our way through the courses of the feast. We are flirting and making friends and talking finances and, and maidenheads. But uh, we are also going to take a quick break because we are just about the halfway point. So we will come back in about 10 minutes and we will see you all right here. Everybody go eat some food.
now. Yeah, hey, everybody. Oh, sorry. And welcome back. I uh, hope you had a break as productive as I did. I took the garbage out. Uh, hey. But other people were probably a little bit more glamorous than that. I had two dogs. Uh, right? And, like, we did stare at our dogs, but I didn't, I didn't pet them because garbage. Um, so uh, we were leaving off with kind of the tail end of the salad course, which is a bright, refreshing uh, spring and summer mix with a dashing citrus notes there at the end. Um, and we were going to pick up uh, with the, the fish course. But first, because it's also the first of the through and through warm courses that are meant to be larger and more filling, there is a little bit of extra time uh, during the salad course for anticipation to build. So we are going to pick up uh, as they were making their way over to the balcony to uh, have uh, Sir Lucaris and Hand of the King and Lord of the Vale, John Aaron, chat. We actually have a few late bringers uh, to bring into the show uh, with a bonus 24 uh, that somebody tossed in. Uh, some latecomers to the feast that were just waiting on a roll. Uh, escorting him in uh, is the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, uh, Sir Barristan Selmy, who is nominally off-duty in that he doesn't have his helmet on. He is here as a guest at the feast, um, and there is an open chair for him at the the royal table as a member of the small council, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, but Sir Barristan Selmy being Sir Barristan Selmy, he has never turned all the way off. So he was still clearly uh, providing kind of a royal escort to a guest uh, that was arriving late. Uh, and that is Lord Monford Velaryon, uh, who Ooh. is an early 50s uh, silver fox, even if he wasn't of Targaryen blood, uh, or, or at least Valyrian blood. He's got that that pale silver hair. Uh, he is actually directly your uncle, uh, each and every one of you that is here. Uh, his sister was your mother, Lena, uh, who passed away uh, just after uh, Adam's birth. Uh, so you knew that he was in the joust, but you'd also heard throughout the week that he was just kind of distracted and his heart wasn't in it. Um, and you would have heard that he was speaking to the Maester's Conclave. Um, so, as Grand Maester Pycelle makes a big deal of standing up uh, beneath his heavy chain and clearing his throat and announcing that Lord Monford Valerian of Driftmark, Lord of the Tides, uh, which is the honorific that goes with House Valerian, um, as he arrives, you can't help but notice uh, the young acolyte, Alaras, uh, kind of serving um, as the hands of Grand Maester Pycelle, because Grand Maester Pycelle is eating. Um, he uh, immediately approaches Lord Monford um, with a kind of sad shake of his head, is the vibe you get, kind of an apologetic look, um, and holds his hands out in a little... Like, I don't have anything for you. So it sounds like maybe he was waiting on a raven uh, somewhere. You do also recall that his son, Monteris, uh, is the heir to Driftmark, who's about six or seven, and has ever been a sickly youth. Uh, none of you have ever met him. Uh, even you up here in King's Landing, Luke, uh, Monteris has not left Driftmark. He has never been well enough to travel. Um, so it sounds like maybe Lord Monford's been worrying, waiting on news from home, both, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, your uncle Monford does get uh, announced, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as a quick aside on the topic of your sickly, frail cousin, um, Luke, you would know this. You are next in line for Driftmark, by the way. Um, because you are the next nearest male relative. So because it's Driftmark specifically, it 
when it backtracks to your mother <laughs> and they start down a new branch, the the ownership of Driftmark does bypass Reyna and Bela because it is specifically not Dornish territory. Um, but uh, yeah, so in in know. your in your more selfish moments, you may not have always thought your young cousin well. Uh, you know, perhaps in the dark of night as the third son or, or the third child, there are times that you might have wished for your uncle's concerns to be laid to rest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it's on you uh, well, in your- There are moments those thoughts would have been um, there, of course. Uh, but yeah, you've got one more. Are you breaking? Uh, yeah, I was. I was just. Yeah, I assumed poor. There was being a being get... going on outside, and apparently it ended poorly for someone. Oh, but that was a door. Yikes! Well, better a door than like a gunshot or something. Yes. So, hopefully all's well, and you don't need to run AFK or anything. I, uh, so. I just assumed it was a poor trying to escape. Oh, uh, uh, no. how dare you? <laughs> uh, so, uh, we do have a, a fresh arrival, uh, or rather two, from that uh, number 20. Excuse me for the coughing. Um, so, Lord ah. Monford Valerian has arrived, uh, as has Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Uh, this Lord is Garrison, definitely going to so. throw Luke off his game as he's approaching to talk to. Uh, um uh Lord Aaron. Well, and this is this is after the approach. This is as you guys are making your way to the balcony. Okay. So uh it's your call. If you want to steer away to, to go greet your uncle, that would be probably a mistake right this second. Yeah, uh, I'll, because I'm gonna you've got the hand point. of the you know, so yeah. yeah. Um, at least the show. You're at the point of 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 stay committed to the hand of the king because you've got his attention, but you know, a wave or something wouldn't be untoward, but yeah. Okay, Robert, I, I can be on it if it helps. So yeah, I definitely uh, want to talk to him, but but you got to deal with this first. Definitely. You know, one one of one of your siblings can sort of grab him. You stay away from my island. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Well, um. that's just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, mean uh, I, was just, I was just, I was just assuming I was going to get the Danit lands once, I, once I convinced the king to give it to us. I, 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 I'm working on that. Be cool. Uh, be cool. Be cool. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Adam is not capable of being cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. On the, uh, on the quick topic of being cool, and then we're gonna go to the balcony. Um, Adam, you notice with your your very high passive awareness and the way it's always not so passive on Oris, um, Oris's eyes kind of follow Barristan Selmy when he enters. And Oris kind of straightens up a little and like maybe tries to look knightly or clean cut or adult or whatever. Uh, for all that he has shown nothing but scorn for the other members of the Kingsguard that the house has interacted with, um, he seems to just kind of straighten up and try to look knightly around Barristan Selmy, Lord Barristan the Bold, the Living Legend, yeah. yada yada yada. Um, yeah. So I, I just a small thing to notice. And... Yeah, like it's kind of hard not to. Um, like nobody wants to let Grandpa Barristan down, um, no. but it is something that you notice with a lot of other people that that Oris seems to not care about impressing or not. Um, yeah. you, you can tell that he he kind of tracks uh, Sir uh, Barristan's uh, progress through the room uh, and that sort of thing. Okay. So, just that's a, just a note. Know. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's good. Yeah. So on the balcony, uh, you have the initiative. Uh, this was your idea. So what do we got going on, Luke? Um, Lord Aaron, I wanted to talk to you uh, briefly about something. Uh, no doubt you're aware of the trouble with the Dennett lands and the accusations and my sister and the, well, the unfortunate combat that wound up in young Adam Dennett's death. 
the bro uh, he, he gives you a, a closed lipped smirk. He goes, Indeed, uh, it was rather difficult to miss at the opening feast, I'm afraid. That is, yeah. Um, the situation is awkward enough that we've been thrust into. That said, whatever happened, the small folk were apparently murdered, and those lands are in need of a caretaker. Currently, they would fall to house Wormwood. I, uh, based on iron the, words, words. By the way. Oh, oh yeah sorry ironwood based on the recent I, just, uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't a purposeful insult is all no no uh, no it was not I just, <laughs> my, how, I like, my well, words mixed fault. up gotcha. although I'll, I'll use that later that's good right like I'm like it's fair just maybe not with this guy but all right what well, was it intended but yeah and uh well they didn't seem to have much care over the small folk either let alone this claim um, I wonder if those lands and I speak to you openly here I wonder if those lands wouldn't be better back under my house's tenure he uh, kind of leans on the railing in the manner of someone that has spent a lot of time leaning on this railing and talking about this sort of thing right like it's, it's very much a uh, kind of west wing you are in my office wherever I go vibe that you get from John Aaron and you can't help but remember that you know he has largely been running the kingdom while Robert has not that's um, why I'm talking to so, him you know, you definitely you know you know that you know uh, yeah, you, you're in his place of business here and he goes I see well I'm sure that you understand why King Robert gave the Danet lands to House Ironwood I'm aware the Our iron... families were once uh, in opposition. A long time ago, though. Not so long to many. Uh, the Ironwoods and Danets stood together uh, and helped topple House Targaryen. Though the reasons that you would not are understandable, uh, and here his gaze kind of flickers back into the room, even to, like, your uncle, the Lord of Tides from House Valerian, Right, very pointedly, there are silver hair, uh, you know, dotted here and there. He goes, while those reasons were understandable, they still happened. Uh, King Robert wanted a great many more bodies from that rebellion than he may have gotten. There was talk of all the dragon seed being wiped clear of Westeros. It was all some of us could do to talk him down from it. There are days, of course, that he regrets what happened to uh, uh, the uh, the princess, uh, a referral to the Princess Elia, uh, he goes, to the princess and her children, of course. But there are days that King Robert does not regret what happened to the princess and her children. What was done to the Lady Liana, more have died for less. And uh, House Baratheon is not... House Baratheon is not known for their forgiving nature, whether two decades have passed or not. So I don't suppose I should mention nor are we, um, but that's not really relevant at this point. Um, I bring this up not as a personal issue, but rather uh, an issue of concern, not, not only the small folk there, but just in general. Um, and I'll be frank with you, Miss uh, Lord Aaron. Somebody wanted that duel. Somebody wanted my sister to kill Danit. I don't know who it was, but whoever it is expects to grab those lands. It indeed, would be another injustice uh, to allow them to have it. Indeed, but now here you are with your house, the winner of that duel, and asking for those lands. You can see how that could be seen as an injustice as well. I do. Now the seven found my sister innocent, but not all are as pious as we would like. Indeed, some are quite a bit more practical. And but that noticed is why I come to young, you. And some noticed that young Lord Adam did not look well before or during the duel. 
No, he didn't, did he? I wish he had talked to me beforehand. I tried to... Uh, that That's that's in the past now. Um. Well, I figured I would let you know my desire is there. And then you can think it over, and if you think it's a good fit, maybe you can push to the king's ear on those better days of his. Uh, the request has been duly noted. Very well. I won't take up any more of your time then, uh, Lord Aaron. I do see my uncle's arrived. I'd like to go speak to him. Uh, he uh, kind of holds you up for a moment, like before you can mm-hmm. go. Uh, indeed, what news he has received this week from Driftmark has not been good. Uh, it would seem your cousin continues to struggle. Uh, send him uh, my regards when you speak with him. This is sad news. I will. Thank you, Lord. All right. Um, so we're going to cut there. Anybody else want to go speak to Uncle Monford before the fish course arrives? Like, or did we want to wait? I'm leaving it up to you no, all. No, we should all go um, speak to our uncle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the three of you are sitting close enough together uh, that you can uh, quite pointedly travel as a group. Um yeah which is also you know, quite appropriate. So yeah. by default, yeah. Yeah, um, just because I'm gonna... saying that like, you know, excuse me, my, my uncle has just arrived. I should go and greet him. Sort of right, thing. and that's... That's, that's yeah. to get myself out there. Yeah, that is that is social nicety aplenty uh, to quickly disentangle and go speak. By default here, we're going to go with Reyna uh, anytime that it's siblings going stuff together, we will default to the highest status score. So, uh, Lady Reyna, uh, your uncle has taken a seat uh, on the tables opposite the Veil contingent, because there's a bit more room there. Um, but he has sat himself down at kind of the head of that table. So he's opposite Sir Garland, uh, and not far. Uh, he is also uh, of a generation uh, with Sir Bonifer the Good from the Stormlands, who's not terribly far away. Um, so yeah, we'll say it's Sir Garland and Sir Bonifer that are talking uh, and greeting uh, Lord Monford as he has a seat. And he waves away his salad. Uh, like a servant is not sure whether to take it, and he's just, nah, no sin. Push to talk. Sorry, I forgot. We will. <laughs> I've been playing Overwatch without Push to Talk, so I'm kind of spoiled. <laughs> I, I find when I play Overwatch, my hands on the control key for no uh-huh. reason. <laughs> but uh, so I, I will, will go across and towards him, like make eye contact, catch his eye, so he knows we're coming. He sees us. <laughs> uh, and and most of you have. Uh, the 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 twins have met him once during one of your like two visits to Sunspear, um, like because he is the Lord of Tides and sometimes he still just goes sailing, um, but like you met him like once during one of those visits. Um, Adam, you know him by reputation only. Um, I haven't met my own parents. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but, um, and you know, so yeah, he, you all kind of know of each other more than you really like know each other but that's also not at all uncommon in westeros the way this society works so his uh his greeting to you is comparatively warm uh you know for a nigh stranger you know hey you know your your mother was his sister uh and he knows of familial obligations etc etc so for someone that you have barely met um he, he rises to greet you um and uh, perhaps forces a smile, but but smiles all the same. Um, uh, and he kind of pauses, like he's not sure if he should offer a hand or a hug. And then just kind of says, well, you, you lot have grown since last I saw you. <laughs> I will take his hand and like tuck my arm through his, you know, <laughs> and, and kind of do that lean hug thing. <laughs> 
uh, uncle, uh, is a wonderful and rare pleasure to see you here. Uh, myself and, and Bela, it has been years since we have seen you. And this is Adam, our youngest brother. My lord uncle. Um, pleasure for to the meet record, you. yeah. Sir Garland and Sir Bonifer did rise as uh, the ladies approached the table, uh, and then they're seating themselves and kind of pointedly talking about the joust and sh you know, like, like you know, not interrupting the family stuff. But they did go through the motions. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, Lord Monford uh, bows very politely to to Adam in, in return. He says, "Ah, nephew, that is it's good to meet you at at long last." Uh, I heard you sailed past Driftmark on your way to and from White Harbor. Uh, I was sorry we were not able to, to meet even in passing uh, as you begin your journey towards manhood. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I'm sure there are many calls upon your time. Indeed, uh, even during uh, celebrations of life such as this with the uh, Princess Macella's uh, name day, uh, tourney, and festivities. Mm. I'm afraid that uh, much of my concern has been at home uh, in Driftmark. We had hoped uh, to share his symptoms with the Maester's Conclave and uh, cast a wider fishing net, as it were, to see if perhaps some of the wisdom of other Maesters might help where ours has not been able to, but I'm afraid the, the news has been Sparse and not good. I'm sorry to hear that. That is yeah. a tragedy. Young Monteris fights still, uh, but we had hoped to uh, muster him some reinforcements, uh, as it were. Unfortunately, I, I trust you'll all understand he was not able to make it uh, to the tourney. But I'm I'm pleased I can regale him with. Uh, tales of his cousin's victories upon my return. Of course, and and please, please take to him our best wishes and 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 blessings and hope that he will grow strong. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, the, uh... My, uh, our other brother is here. Uh, uh, Lucaris has stepped outside, I believe to speak to the hand. Lucaris okay. just happens to be approaching right then. The timing should have worked out just yeah. fine. <laughs> oh, but here he is. Here he is. Uncle. Luke. Uh, newly spurred, I hear. Sorry I couldn't make it for that ceremony. No, no. No apologies needed. I, I've heard the dire news. I hope... Oh, well... My thoughts are with you and uh, your young son. They are appreciated. I will send my cousin uh, your concern. Is um, uh, Barristan Selwyn still here? Yes, uh, Sir Barristan had a seat up at the, the royal table. He is chatting amiably uh, with John Aaron as he returns. Okay, as long as he's not on this exact table, I'm going to talk to him so, but that's fine. Uh, well, Uncle, I, I don't want to interfere too much with your evening, I, um, but if there is anything that we can do for you, please let us know. Please reach out. Uh, indeed, uh, it is appreciated. And, and of course, uh, your grandfather has uh, shared similar offers, but alas, uh, if our own maesters are of little help with the, the boy's constitution, uh, I'm not sure what can be done from Dorn or even from Driftmark. But yes, your, your concern is appreciated, uh, and I'm sure that the Seven will listen to our prayers eventually. I pat his hand on my arm. <laughs> yeah, he puts uh, a hand on his knuckle shoulder and kind of kind of nods quietly. I think... I mean, if you believe that the warmth and the dry air of of Wyvern's Rest would aid your son 
we would, of course, open our doors and our hearts to you and your family should you wish to visit. Indeed, uh, indeed. Uh, I may take you up on it. Uh, uh, I I may be remiss in not visiting Sunspear again, but if the lot of you are just there at Wyvern's Rest, I'm I'm sure that a visit may be uh, of some help. Uh, We will see. Uh, We will see. Of course. And I'd give him a kiss on the cheek and step away. That way, if anybody else wants to monopolize his time in our little pod, that's fine. I hope you'll find um, some pride in how well our families are on the list, at least, Uncle. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Though uh, I was not in my best form uh, out of character, he did uh, lose in the first pass, uh, you may recall, but he's also Lord of Tides, not Lord of Saddles. So he was just kind of there going through the motions. Uh, Velarians aren't particularly renowned jousters. That's not what they're for. Uh, but he goes, yes, indeed. Uh, I'm glad that the lot of you did better than I did. Uh, a Kingsguard knight. Uh, he gives Bela a, a proud smile. And I hear your bastard caught one as well. Indeed. Uh, oh, they yes. can't all be... Uh... They can't all be sell me. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Uh, but yes, uh, you have you have done uh, Lena proud. Do not doubt. She uh, smiles down on you with the mother's approving gaze, I'm certain. Adam feels like a, a little twinge in his heart. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, enough speaking of uh, of the ill and the dead. I uh, hear I made it just in time for the fish course. Uh, so go on, let's all have our seats and uh, see what Robert's kitchens have prepared for us. And he just kind of gestures airily to the room in general. Because remember that there are yeah. pointedly, you know, plenty of empty chairs. I think a lot of us have found a nice little seat over here with some um, uh, Dell women, if you don't mind, Uncle. He, uh, he gives you a, a knowing look and goes, well, there aren't many that are prettier than Sir Garland, but it seems you found one. I bear you no <laughs> ill will. Going back for another pass, are you, Luke? I was right, well, only then, away on business. Okay. I'll walk back with Adam. Mm-hmm. Kind of be like, I saw you speaking with Lord Baelish. Yes. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and I'm rather uh, pleased that he thought me worth talking to. I was just asking him questions about, well, well, you know, with with me, uh, with uh, Grandpa Maker having put in, having put me in charge of. Uh, running our finances while we were here I thought the Master of Coin might be someone uh, it would be profitable to consult on how to manage house funds well I think that is an excellent idea and it seemed to be going very well <laughs> thank you sister I, I I think I made a good impression excellent do you want to return to them or do you want to come stay with the ladies and Luke? <laughs> is that is that a request for me to join you? It's an offer. Well, not Luke, a request. I mean, well, Luke, Luke was gesturing to me earlier that he, he wanted me to uh, join in. So I, I probably should or he'll think I'm avoiding him. All right. But I'm totally well, not. Come sit. Have some fish. <laughs> So sounds like for the fish course, we've got Luke, Reyna, and Adam all going back to the little Vale contingent. Uh, what about Bela? Yeah, I think I will join for this course. Okay. And then see what my options offer. Yeah, same. Right. Like, you know, come, come, come back. Leo. We'll, we're all meet, all meet yeah, up. With and the we'll uncle. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, all I was right. trying to invite him along with us. I don't know if that was clear. Uh... He did, but he just kind of wished we're you happy hunting. 
instead of wanting to hang out and talk about his sickly son, he's like, you young people go have fun. Uh, and also Sir Bonifer Hasty, uh, Sir Bonifer the Good, uh, is one of the few people uh, in the room that is kind of of an age uh, with with Lord Monford, so he seems to con- content to just kind of hang out over there. He went and, to the uh, old guy yeah. table. Well, it's the old guy <laughs> table because there's one old guy there, along with like Sir Garland the Darlin. And, you know, it's just yeah, it's where he ended up. Um, so all right, then all of House Nymerian uh, will be over there uh, as trays of clay break the clay baked trout. Uh, in a parsley caper vinegar sauce. Uh, oh, is by the way, third... Ross, you get back down. I said uh, right next to Miranda Royce, enough that our legs are pressed against each other. Gotcha. Oh, ho, ho. nice. I, I assumed the next two part, but the the increased physical intimacy is duly noted on my flowchart. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not let me get my <laughs> Excel spreadsheet out. I've got a, a those I've yes. got a, a hit location of mildly erogenous zones uh, going for the dinner table here. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, hit location. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's. Um, I missed a trick uh, not doing any footsie. Yeah, yeah, you just you didn't do enough, but it's got so clay baked trout and a vinegary sauce, and then around each dish is a small thing of small kind of buttered rolls almost but not quite dumplingified by being a part of the last two of the yeah. cooking process. So you've got the rolls for like the sauce if you want the extra. Too um, many carbs. So yeah, there's the, uh, there's the fish course. And it sounded like everybody was back over there with the veil contingent. So chat, uh, give me two numbers and we'll see what pops up. Uh, in addition to the veil ladies, of course, politely greeting the lot of you as you return. Uh, Maya and the, the lady Miranda uh, make a big deal uh, of being introduced to Adam, who they have not seen so far tonight very much. Uh, I, will, I will gallantly kiss their hands. Look at you being Adam, all bold. Feeling his oats. <laughs> risk, risk and cooties. Um, so yeah, he's, uh, they... they uh, you know, Miranda bats her eyelashes. Try Maya any, looks a little any, uncomfortable any about it. Tonight, Adam. What? Uh, try not hitting too many bullseyes tonight, Adam. Sorry, I I did not make that out. So, as Adam kisses their hands, Luke will say, "Try not hitting too many bullseyes tonight, <laughs> Adam." Oh, <laughs> Adam the Archer. Uh, yes, I I, I guess tonight. Yeah. I, I'm just being polite. Don't fluster and, him. He's doing so well. No, and and, and, don't and worry, quite Luca, charmingly I'm, so. I, I am no threat to you, Luke. Uh, Miranda Adam takes everything so defensively. <laughs> Miranda, Miranda very pointedly says, "I wouldn't be so sure, Luke," uh, and, and gives Adam a smile uh, and bats her eyelashes and defends his gallantry. Oh, you're, you're, you are too kind, my lady. Uh, Why, so, uh, lady Royce, I believe you are a troublemaker. Sir Lucaris, uh, I believe I've heard the same about you. Ha! Uh, uh, ha! All and slander, of course, unless oh, it was that's, good. That's definitely true. Yeah, pretty much. Get it? So, uh, wait, wait, wait. Adam is several more drinks in by now, so he is probably quite squishy. <laughs> so, yeah, well, like he did, you know, kiss hands and stuff, so we assumed it wasn't from a surplus of sobriety. Yeah, that uh, is how you get so, cootie. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, like he was at the, the most cootie free table prior to all this, <laughs> uh, but he's deep in the danger zone at this point. Danger um, zone. So, uh, with our 21, you actually hear a little bit of a fuss uh, as people are beginning to to kind of pick at their fish. Maya is once again, like, waiting to see how Miranda eats it. Uh, And it's like, okay, dainty, pick it off the bone with the fork. 
what do we do with the skin? Oh God, the skin. Okay, good. It's crispy. Yay. You know, like she's kind of waiting. <laughs> Miranda is taking point. Miranda eats uh, with excellent manners, but she clearly, like King Robert Baratheon, she enjoys eating and drinking and, and that sort of thing. Um, so she is not um, dainty little lady bites just to go through the motions of eating the food. Like she's like, you know, she's enjoying herself. Uh, but with the 21, uh, we actually have a little bit of hubbub over at the Lugus tables. Uh-oh. Uh, as you hey, hear... Uh, Rusty, real uh, quick. Yep. Uh, was I able to wear my small sword into this place? Yes, small sword, yes. Okay. Spear and the like, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, sidearm level weapons, yes. Okay. Things that you wear instead of carry tend to be okay. Okay, fair enough. A, like, worried about the fish being undercooked or, or what? Oh, that's a, you never know. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's just a small hubbub over in the Lugas table. Uh, it's the Lady Marita Lugas is getting a little bit loud, uh, almost always with berating Sir, Lang Sir Langley Woods, her betrothed. She's just kind of like, uh, can we talk about anything else? Oh, or what if you just tried not talking for a bit before you spoil the fish? Uh, and she's just getting enough wine in her. And it looks like she started on the Tiroshi brandy a bit ago that she's been drinking it like wine. Um, so she's just kind of been getting louder. Um, and eventually Orton uh, just kind of claps his, his tankard on the table. Uh, and this is what kind of draws everyone's eye, as he just goes, enough, Marita. As the seat is now available, as Norton is regaling King Robert with no doubt fanciful tales of bedroom conquests, why don't you take Nathan's seat? And I will speak with your betrothed while we continue to discuss the details of your marriage. Move, sister. Uh, and he's just stepping in and and shoving her a seat or two down and separating them. So it's kind of hard to miss. Um, you know, nobody's throwing hands or anything. But he got to the point where he was tired of, of his sister getting louder and louder uh, and potentially embarrassing him. So he, he nipped it in the bud. Uh, it's not any worse than the Lady Olena stabbing the Grand Maester or anything. So <laughs> not quite not quite a breach of etiquette. Um, but it was, you know, enough to kind of draw everyone's attention. Uh, so yeah, it definitely looks like Orton is uh, stepping up as the uh, the brother to his sister. Uh, in Nathan's absence, uh, so that's kind of the the big the big drama around the twenty one is Marita's increased volume uh, as she gets more and more in her cups. She just turns the dial up a, a little more. That was the little uh, bookish Lucas who got onto her, right? Yes, that was Orton, who was also the one that arranged the marriage. Uh, he has arranged all her marriages. So he might also the just be kind of protecting. Guy. Yeah, yes, he is the bookish one, though he did cut the fox knight's head in half. All right, he's the one that got that kill shot. He's been, you know, right. Um, so you notice as as the lady Marita stands up um, to take that seat, she instead um, hip swingingly sashays towards the royal table. So we're just going to kind of move her chess piece up there and pick up from there in future courses and stuff. Uh, but yeah, she is still doing the, like she's wearing black to be grieving and because black is also one of the family colors. But as, has been, the, yeah, as has been the case with her throughout the feast, uh, she's wearing stuff that's a little tight around the hips and a little tight and open uh, around uh, the breasts. So she's... Uh, not exactly in a, you know, some like, baggy, humble uh, type of grieving widow gown. 
she's just going like whatever black is one of my colors right and she is yeah very pointedly uh and she's remember that their mother uh is of clegane stock she's kin to the the you know to the Cleganes, and they've they've got the big beefy builds and that goes to her curve also especially compared to like the dornish uh builds that you know the roinar that you got uh are a little bit more used to she's a big curvaceous gal um kind of miranda royce's curves on maya stone's body uh right because that's marita she's tall and you know uh curvy build so she is definitely flaunting that on her way up to the royal table where she kind of does what her (laughs) so he she she goes through the motions of doing what her brother said but very pointedly doesn't do exactly what her brother said (laughs) so that's that's kind of what's going on there um with the 19 uh you just noticed sir bonifer hasty uh who again is mid 50s you know he's of an age of your uncle monford uh and he is speaking with your uncle monford in his kind of usual sour-faced way uh sir bonifer is called the good because of his piety and his kind of vocal piety he's one of those kind of unpleasantly oh. into the seven types um you know and remember uh the church isn't back in military power we don't have sparrows rousting through the streets or whatever faith medicine or anything yeah right you know that's that's not a thing uh but he's still one of those guys that's very vocal about his faith and about the propriety of the faith uh he's drinking only wine and only watered down and only in moderation um and, and that sort of thing and he also has a complicated history with those of Valyrian blood. Uh, you recall in passing, he was once infatuated with the Lady Rayla Targaryen, who would become Eris's sister wife, uh, and of course, you know, mother to Prince Rhaegar, etc., 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 the mother in law to your kin, Elia Martell, on both sides, you know. Um, but yeah, apparently in their youth. Uh, he was quite infatuated with the Lady Rayla, and she may have returned it, uh, and then he swore off jousting uh, as a result of the fallout of all that. So um, somebody goaded him back into the joust here at Princess Marcella's named attorney, uh, and then he seems to have sworn it off again um, after, after eventually losing. But he is speaking with Lord Monford the way men of a generation do right like you get the feeling he's not actually preaching at lord monford lord monford isn't just going through the motions of speaking about his son or other social niceties you get the feeling that they have some history um sir garland for his part uh has politely kind of joined a different conversation to leave those two uh, alone to their their old men talking um, in a way that, you know, just folks with a couple decades more history than other folks have. So it's nothing loud. It's nothing unpleasant. Um, but you get the feeling it's it's kind of old guys that disagreed in their youth and have just seen a lot of shit together. And now it's kind of mellowed out to just like, hey, I'd rather talk to you than some kid. You know, that kind of vibe, you know. So uh, they look to be, you know, kind of just companionable uh, older folks uh, hanging out. So nothing you can really hear from your side of the room. Uh, but Sir Bonifer seems to be a little more pleasant than normal. And, you know, uh, Lord Monford just might be a little more sincere than normal as kind of the standoffish old Valyrian blood. Uh, you know, he's, he's often a little aloof and seems like the two of them are, are maybe kind of good for each other. Um, so, so that conversation's going on with our, uh, with our 19 over there. Well, good for them getting the old guy. I don't even know what to say. They're just being boring over there. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, they probably they they probably are, you know, like. But this is, you know, uh, it's still kind of noteworthy, um, and it was, uh, you know, the level of of the the level of fan interactivity as a prompt for drama uh, is sometimes going to vary with the random numbers. So that's fine. Uh, Just say. Uh, any other particular plans for the fish course? Uh, um, I wouldn't mention to the rest of the siblings that I am genuinely concerned about our young cousin and his survival. Yeah, yeah that's a shame. That... Dire, doesn't it? Well, uh, if, it... It, well if, 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 if all the assembled maesters of the Conclave can't help him, then I'm not sure anyone can. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like new news to the lot of you. It's just like, this is all you've ever heard about your young cousin um, is that he is, he has not been well. He's poorly. Um, he's not well. He's just, he he, he not doesn't worse. still breastfeed though, right? Not that you have heard of. Then he's no. got one up over some kids. See, what you need to do is get him some of that, that, uh, this uh, flea bottom, get him some of the good stuff. So he'll, he'll, t- mm. <laughs> Get, He'll gain a what, couple like, feet and a hundred pounds overnight. I, and, you know. get, I suspect that will there. turn most young boys into whatever they end up being. I think we need to pay for Bessa to go over there and sort him out. She'll, uh, get, but, yeah, she'll, get, him, she'll get him. She'll get him fed up, right? So it doesn't sound like it's a particularly. Not like that look, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not particularly. Look, use another half a foot. Oh. Uh, so it doesn't sound like it's new dire news. It's just not a solution, right? Like, like you know, they were hoping hey, maybe, for an you know. answer, and they yeah. didn't get the one they wanted. Yeah. So yeah. they're like, you know, just some kids don't do well. You know, it happens. You know. Um, so yeah. So again, it's it's not like a, yeah, a new crisis not type of thing. Up, yeah. Like being next in line to the to the seat. Yes. Uh, and and with your uh, your, your sincere expression of grief and concern, uh, the the lady Miranda puts her hand back on your arm, like it's so gallant of you to say you give a half ass care about your sickly cousin, like you're so brave, <laughs> right? Like, it's a just, but it's, it's an excuse to, yeah, it's an excuse to, you are the real victim here. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> an excuse. <laughs> It's it's an excuse to pat your arm a bit, and so she does so. I think it's more that there are very few left of our bloodlines, and the loss of even one branch off this tree is should be mourned. Uh, there if it is, happens. Yeah, there is another Valerian bouncing around, but he is a bastard. Really. Hmm. Where is he? In my list to befriend. Uh, sorry, what was the question? Who is he? Uh, he is Orain Waters. Orain. Uh, A U R A N E. He is the bastard of Driftmark. Uh, he is your uncle's half brother, so he's also your uncle. Um, but yeah, uh, he is uh, a good bit younger. He is mid late twenties ish, uh, instead. So, uh, but yeah, he is. He is around. Uh, he's probably on drift mark or on patrol right now. He essentially serves as kind of a, a retainer of, of House Valerian, you okay. know, uh, kind of you know the the way the bastard brother of the Lord might be like a master at arms type of thing. He is. Only again, their military stuff is all fleet-ish, so he's just you know he rides on their, uh, you know, fleet patrols, yada 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 yada. Uh, he is he's not here pirate. this week. <laughs> uh, he is a very good-looking fellow, from all that you have heard. Uh, he's got those Valerian features, um, and a few have, uh, you know, you've, you've probably heard of the ladies comment on it, here and there. Alrighty then. Sorry, I didn't know about him. No problem. Uh, I, I, uh, you, we haven't really been doing a lot of Valerian stuff 
uh, which was part of why out of character I added him to the guest list tonight, just to remind you guys, he is here. He has had his reasons to not be pursuing company this week, so you guys haven't interacted with him very much. So I thought I'd kind of force the issue and remind everyone that you have close kin on Driftmark. Uh, uh, so it's fine. With a hand abstentially uh, on his sword, in reality on Royce's thigh, uh, Luke will kind of nod along, and um, he's kind of spoken what he needs to speak right now. So, well, oh man, you know, like I like I joined up with the group because like earlier Luke had been like, "Come and talk to me, bro," and now he's to, like he's off, like now he's just found some girl who doesn't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> Look, he's a little distracted. That is true. No, that's that's to- like out of character. That's totally fine. Um, but Adam's going to be like, until until uh, the conversation does happen, Adam's going to be like, "What did he want to talk to me about? Did he want to bother me about girls again?" Because, like, <laughs> 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 or or did he actually want to co- like talk about something that uh, I can not be frightened of? I think he just wanted to get you out of the foul, the clutches of that that man. <laughs> oh, he's that man now. Oh goodness that me. Man. That man. That man. <laughs> uh, uh, does, does anybody want to bring up Corbray or anything during the fish course? Or uh are we politely ignoring it because he's still within move and attack distance on a combat map? <laughs> I, I, I think, guess I will say not about that, but I will say to a way that will look at her and say, uh, I did bring up with the Hand of the King the issue of the inheritance that Dana lands. Oh, I made sure our claim was known. What did he say? Was that last thing? I made sure our claim was known. Um. What? All right. Are you saying Have that's some all more of us? wine, <laughs> Robert? Are you saying that's all of us? Uh, yeah. The rain is visibly all chick. there. It, the water's chick. <laughs> the stone chick. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, so. Luke doesn't seem to, didn't need to hide the fact that our our family would like the land back and has a claim to it. So. Battery low. Of course. Well, well, I mean, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, that won't um, make us look too culpable in that particular situation. But I think I might be able to Charging help battery. actually with that because well, um, that's I had clearly planned, you. Go ahead. I had planned to actually ask the the masters about that about whether there was precedent for land land being. Uh, whether we could, similarly to what you've proposed, um, claim control of the lands back, however, at, more as regents, because um, the actual heir to the house is, that is left now is missing. Uh, there is um, Adam Dunn's sister is missing and was not found we could make a case that we we want to find out what happened there anyway we could also look for her and it I, might be, I, it, it might be easier for us to make those investigations if we have free if like if we can move around freely in that land that sounds um, wonderful that's a fair point I, I did bring the fact that we were considered the small folk there clearly someone killed them and but all in front of this of the seven, talk we is are probably in very of... boring to Miranda and oh, Maya. We shouldn't be talking politics when this is a party. Right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I suspect uh, these two find them a little more interesting than nothing at all. Well, we don't have to say nothing. It's not. It's not a choice between nothing or, you know, house matters. Well, I have said what I intended to say. Um, I have made it known to the hand of the king we'd be interested and that we have good reason to. 
obviously right. all the concerns are concerns he has as well. Um, sure. We'll see what happens. If anybody else wishes to push it further, I do suggest they do so. Right. Yeah, uh, there's things that I can look into some things. A quick meta note. Uh, Maya Stone has been trying her best to like politely listen in because she'd been told you're supposed to make eye contact and listen when people talk to you and stuff. <laughs> Uh, Miranda has been pointedly not. She's suddenly like, mm, motherfucking fish. And, and like, she's been, you know, just kind of took on a cooler expression of like, oh, they're talking business. I will make a point of not hearing it. Yada, yada, yada. You know, um, nobody's commenting either way. Uh, but highborn ladies not from Dorne learn very quickly how to stop hearing things. Uh, you know, when talk turns to to manly matters of running a kingdom and stuff. Uh, so she doesn't respond or seem... Uh, I, I want to make sure Luke has the whatever. expression on him that tells her the girls that, like, okay, you're playing along. I get it. Way to go. All right. I drink, like, a whole goblet of wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Drown your disappointment in your brother. Drink it down. Ball it up in your stomach. Hold it there. That's, not, I mean, that's, the, whole, that's the whole point of emotions. They're like a fine port. You're supposed to bottle them up for 20 years then give them to your godson on his 18th birthday. <laughs> all right. You two aren't coming to Driftmark on my name day. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> With that, Man, I... has it been said? <laughs> With that, I'm gonna get up and grab my goblet and say, "I'm gonna go that was clearly, King uh, for this <laughs> fine dinner." <laughs> that was out of character. Oh, that was sarcasm. <laughs> uh, is that is Bela still wanting to shift up to the royal table? Yes. For the main course. All right. So everyone else is still with the uh, the veil contingent. Oh, what's up well, with Adam? If, if, if we're moving on to the next course, I was going to go over to Orton. Okay, uh, so we will pair up with various Lugasai uh, because Nathan and the Lady Marita are now up at the royal table. Um, Nathan is right. chatting with King Robert. Uh, Marita sashayed up there. Um, and then we've got uh, Adam heading to the other Lugas uh, to go hang out with Orton. The main course, meanwhile, uh, chat, go ahead and give me... Let's make it three more numbers out of chat. Uh, chat, give me three. Uh, the main course is brought out, uh, and it is a, a bevy of geese. Uh, they are uh, geese, or rather it is, the dish is goose stuffed with pigeon, and then a mixture of breadcrumb, mulberries, and pecans. Uh, so it's this kind of spiced stuffing mixture with... Uh, like inside a pigeon and then outside a pigeon inside a goose. So it's like a stuffing birdception type of thing. Yeah. But it's a pigoosin. Uh, so uh, that is the the first main course is uh, pigeon goosin with mulberries, pecans, and a breadcrumb mixture. Um all right, so we've got a three, eight, and a five. Okay. Um, and then what we're actually going to do, we're going to nix the five uh, from, from ERA because we've already spent a little more time with Peter Baelish uh, than we had planned. So we're going to nix the five and swap in locks 23. Uh, but uh, Ira Hexa, I know I'm saying your name wrong. I'm sorry. Make sure you remember to pick first next time I call for numbers. So we're going to go 3823 for this batch because I am also trying to spread things around also to like where the players are so that uh, we'll do that. Hopefully that works. So uh, we've got 3823. Give me one second. Uh, and then because Luke uh, and Reyna both had to go randomly AFK, 
Uh, we are going to cut to the 23, because that is Sir Langley Woods, who is over there <laughs> seated right next to Orton Lugas. So we're going to cut uh, over to Ash slash Adam, uh, because that's where one of our little random numbers was. Uh, so it's Langley Woods just trying to companionably unload on Orton Lugas in like a, duh, I don't know what to do to make her happy. And you arrange the marriage and it just, it seems like she's just, I'm not enough for her. And if she's this bad, when we're just engaged, I don't know what to do. And I, I, I bought fancy metal armor like a proper knight and it's not working. And I'm trying to act like one of you Southern lords and that's not working. And I just, I served her all the wine she asked for and then the brandy that she wanted, but she only got worse and worse. It's that sort of just kind of commiserating. Oh, um, man, like, while I, I, Orton like... is just kind of coolly like, like, yeah, you did. This is never going to work out. Sorry, I ruined your life. But whatever, man, like you guys signed the contracts. So you're going to marry her. Suck it up. Like he's kind of short <laughs> on like wow. empathy. Like he's not being a dick about it, but it's just like, yes, I know. I'm sorry, especially when she's in her cups. She could be quite a handful. Some men rather appreciate that, though. Uh, you're like he's trying to kind of like yeah, yeah. Like, like bitches what you gonna Move do bro over. you know yeah so uh that is the scene uh as you approach the, the open seats uh over there with with orton so uh that's your cue adam what do we got everything all right i mean everything's clearly not all right but um this is this is the polite way to come in i guess <laughs> Uh, Sir Langley takes in a breath like he's about to start over and Orton cuts him off with his higher status roll <laughs> for like an intrigue initiative. He rolls the dice and gets him. He goes, yes, yes, no, everything's fine. Uh, this, Tiro <laughs> this Tiroshi brandy just got uh, in into my sister's head a, a bit quicker than any of us suspected. So she's just been a, a little untoward this evening. That's all. I see. Well, do you mind if I join you? Oh, not at all, not at all. Uh, and poor he, guy. he turns and, and kind of shoves open, you know, the chair next to him uh, and, and gestures for you to sit in between the two of them. Like okay. he slides back over to his chair yeah. and is now offering you Maritas yeah. between he and Langley. I feel like he's going like, you're stuck with him now. <laughs> Uh, how are things on the uh, eastern side of the room? Or whichever direction it would be, you know. Busy. Just to... <laughs> Quite busy. Um, yes. I've been, of, I think I've sort of had more conversations with important people than I have in my entire life. Indeed. It would seem the uh, Master of Coin had a, an enthralling conversation given how long you sat at that particular table? Well, yes, the the company there was was very pleasant. Uh, I I wanted to really uh, just sort of learn from him, I guess. Um, there's, um, you know, I, I'm sort of expected to be the clever one in the family, so I might as well talk to clever people and learn how they clever. Indeed, <laughs> uh, a similar struggle I find myself facing in the Stormlands at large, I'm afraid. I knew you uh, it, looks, it looked as though you didn't find only clever people to talk with. No, I spoke a little bit with uh, Sterling Corbury and Michael Redfort. Um, though they're not the sparkling conversationalists that Lord Baelish is. Well, you seem to have uh, had a productive evening then. And I saw your Lord Uncle arrive. Uh, it sounds as though the news may not have been good. Unfortunately not, no. It was good to meet him for the first time, though I wish it were in better circumstances. Indeed. Uh, well, by all means, let's uh, dig in on uh, the goose here, as it is soundly well cooked 
uh, come, Langley, uh, have you had this before? And he kind of tries to, to include old gangly Langley into it, who is like, I've, I've had goose, but what's all this stuff? Uh, and is like, whoa! Oh, that, like, that, he's that, like, oh that, shit, that, there's a pigeon in here, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, Adam's like into food and stuff, so we'll kind of talk him through it and why these things go nicely together and, and stuff. But um, if at all possible, kind of surreptitiously, um, by which I mean, like, if, if I can kind of do this in a, in a way that Orton's not going to like automatically notice I'm doing it of um like I don't know maybe kind of like try and kind of console Langley a little bit um, just like going going like, for the rebound like, gonna gonna seduce him away not, from Marita and stuff is that what you're I mean who can no. deal with women after all or there was no. another option no the, the, the whole, I, that's not what I'm doing I'm using the yeah. <laughs> I know you uh, are. I know you are. Because um, because you yeah. hadn't you hadn't blushed enough this session compared to last. <laughs> I had to I had to get no, that red going. I know, like we've we've set the bar really quite high. Um, we have. We got to give so, the people like, what they want. So, so, so Langley, I'd let her have a bit of space. I'm sure she'll calm down. But if she does not, almost all contracts have loopholes. I'm sure one could be found if you felt that things would if you require extracting oh no 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 i i love her and and she will grow to love me in time that's how that's how these marriages work oh lord he sounds desperately <laughs> upbeat oh you sweet summer child <laughs> um well i i certainly hope so I, I certainly like to believe that love prevails. It, it will with us. I just, I, I just need to give her what she wants enough that she knows I mean it. Well, I mean, have you also tried? I mean, I'm, I'm now. I'm going to say right now. I am absolutely no expert. This is purely from obs observation. That, well. Sometimes if you just automatically give someone everything they want, they will take they might take it for granted. I've I've never thought that, no. Per I mean perhaps I just killed Robert. Okay. I th legitimately <laughs> thought he was gonna fall for a second. There. <laughs> Are you okay? Alright, Robert's good. Robert's good. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but like I mean, you you're clearly a a gallant and earnest knight. That he blushes adorably. Yep. No reactions that, here. <laughs> that's as as you say the well, not as you say. Sorry, um, you know any. There are many young ladies that uh, that find that very desirable, and well, maybe if she, maybe if you you are sort of more if you take a more relaxed posture and aren't sort of chasing after her heels all the time, she might you know if uh, well think about this like when I was. At White Harbor, I was around the same handful of squires all the time, and sometimes that made things quite fractious because, well, we kind of got sick of the sight of each other sometimes. So sometimes getting a bit of space away from someone will make you appreciate their presence more, and I think maybe that would work for her possibly. He gives you a it's it's not a suspicious look. But it's that like, no, nah, I don't think that'll work type of like a skeptical <laughs> look. It's, it's like, no, nah, I don't know. Well, in time, my lovely Lady Lugus will, she'll, she'll chase me back. She'll see. I, once, I, once I bring her home and she sees the splendor of the North, which, which you've seen, uh, she'll, uh -huh. she'll appreciate it. And, and, and all will be well, I'm sure. 
and the wedding will, will be magnificent and 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 she'll I'm, be fine. I'm... we'll be fine wow well i can get a lot of sleep yeah. on the wedding night yeah. well well <laughs> well well certainly the the colder temperatures will give her more excuse to get close to you uh, he uh, he snorts and blushes. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 like I said, I've, I've kind of done my job of, uh, of, of of cheered him up a bit. He's maybe not going to be kind of morose and moaning about it now. And I have I, I have I at least laid, I have at least laid it on the table that uh, that you know there, there's ways out exist if he went, <laughs> if he if he regrets Adam, his decision. Adam but, did his good deed for the day. I would have to... given so much to be there. <laughs> just, just Adam trying to help a row the head a row. He's fine. He's doing his. He's doing his help. He can help everyone except himself. That's how it tends to go. We're gonna it jump does. cut. We're gonna jump cut straight from Langley saying that someday his lovely lady Lugus will love him back. Uh, we're gonna jump cut straight to the king's table uh, with this three. Which is technically the hand of the king, uh, Lord John Aaron of the Vale, but instead we're just we're just gonna make it the king's table in general because we kind of just got done with John Aaron, uh, and right now his lovely lady Lugus is bending over the table facing the king to go, ooh, I've never seen a goose so big, uh, while just showing off them titties though, uh, right all up in Bobby B's face. Uh, like that's the immediate, oh, man. that's the immediate camera cut from uh, from uh, Langley Woods pining away that's for his betrothed. It's it's straight to her, just like showing off the boobs to King Robert uh, right there at the royal table, cooing over the fancy food uh, and uh, that's on offer and showing off what she has on offer right there with her fiance in the room. Um, wow. Nathan notices and just laughs about it. And he gives Robert this elbow in the ribs because uh, he's over on Robert's side of the table. They're just kind of broing it up. Uh, and they've been drinking and eating and like They're talking two about the same every... pod. Yeah. Um, and, and like, here's his sister just like, hey, King, look at my boobs. And Nathan's like, ha, 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 look at her boobs. Right, oh, like it's, it, boobs. Ah. right, like it's that sort of thing. Um, I'm froze and, now. Yeah, so uh, so that's what's going on up there uh, with the the pair of Lucas's uh, hanging out with King Robert. Uh, Stannis Baratheon uh, is pointedly <laughs> not taking part in enjoying the view uh, because a he does not believe in enjoying views. Views are to, just to, in general. Yeah, it's not what those are for. You're if not, not to like, if it isn't a strategic view, he's not interested. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not what your eyes are for. Um, but also, not you know enjoying the look of anyone. He is a married man. Cover yourself, hussy. Why is your brother not covering you? What is even happening right now? Oh, the debauchery of King's Landing. How dare people enjoy themselves in my presence, right? Like that, Stan is just fucking Fun. focused. Uh, uh, serious. Not for me. Yeah, yeah, he's not. He's not here to have a good time, and by here, I mean in this life. Um, so that's <laughs> going on. Uh, we got that going on with our three, um, and Bela is in that general vicinity now. I remember Bela was approaching someone in particular up there. Uh, exactly which one was it? King Robert. Oh, I forgot. She's Ooh. just going right for the fucking top of the food yeah. chain here. So yeah. that's what you walk up so on. So how armored are Robert. the King's Guard right now is the question I have to ask. She hasn't got her spear and they're way on the other side of the room anyway. So, uh, so yeah, that's what you walk up on with King Robert. Uh, is uh, about this that I like. The the widow Lady Marita uh, is you know showing off the goods uh, 
and talking about how big his goose is. <laughs> and, and, and very uh, and specifically, when... Luke stops like the physical attention towards Miranda and is just kind of out of the side of his eye glaring at this. Uh, so what's Bela up to as she approaches? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to cut in on uh, that goose uh, euphemism, but try to spin it a little bit more towards a, a topic that might interest me. And uh, I'll say, uh, yeah, that goose is big, but you know what else is going to be big? That melee tomorrow. And then I hold up my hand. <laughs> <laughs> hold up my, my goblet. The big, of robby dreams. melee. <laughs> <laughs> and say, I'm looking forward to, uh, to doing some more fighting tomorrow. Uh, Cheers and, for the melee. Uh, and King Robert has like a a goose leg the way normal people hold like a chicken leg and you <laughs> swear he like he cleaned that fucking bone in like one bite just like and and then he tosses the you know casts the bone carelessly behind him for somebody else uh to pick up uh and with his mouth still like half full he's like oh, 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 oh. and he, he finishes gulping it out ah yeah 49 of you oh, oh, oh. If it wasn't for this whole tradition of the seven, I've half a mind to armor up and join you myself. That would be quite the honor. Or I could just order one of these other twats to stand down and take a spot. I don't think that would like certainly this. be a great time. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we see him with a would. hammer in his hand. We need to, need to get one of the we can, can get one of the Florins up here and have him alter the lists. Uh, I thought one of the Royce boys got hurt. He might not want to. You know. uh, I don't think it's in Garland or Royce to step down and save themselves for the finals, like some some maiden saving herself for her wedding night, but. Uh, we can make someone quit and find room. I have no doubt, Your Grace. Well, you are the king. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you an appraising look and, and kind of like Marita Lugas also an appraising look just because being opposite that, assuming you're staying on that side of the table. Yeah. Like you're kind of side by side, but he just, uh, yeah. There's some heads I'd like to pound. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> so, he's a subtle creature, our Robert Baratheon. Yeah. Bobby B. Bobby B. Uh, Luke's left hand is actually on his sword now, just, just so everyone knows. As he continues <laughs> to, to drink his his ale. The other... Oh, so the hands, the hands on the sword for her, but not for me. Great. <laughs> 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 that's fine that's fine that's okay i'm not complaining seriously i got i'm like watching from my table <laughs> your siblings <laughs> are all crazy <laughs> and he, I know. Uh, he just he chuckles to himself and goes ah i could join thoros's team hmm oh no they could get that <laughs> get that fray boy off of it I don't think they'd mind making him quit. <laughs> yes. It's been a great opportunity for our family to come up here and participate in the, the jousts and all the competitions. Uh, you actually see his features darken for a moment as though he kind of remembers who he's talking to for the first time. Yes, Ooh. it took it took you a lot your time to get up here, didn't it? Uh, I almost forgot who Lucaris was. Him just shadowing Aaron all this time. Uh, why did you lot need such a powerful invitation anyway? What's your grandfather been up to down there? I'm afraid he might have thought we need extra time to make the right impression. Well, you know, out of character, he, certainly, he certainly wasn't just waiting for the fruit to ripen. 
Uh, you two are well past marrying age. Uh, why'd he keep you away from the capital for so long? He's never shared that. It, it's been a mystery to us as well as you. Huh. Keeping the Dornish beauties in Dorn. That's not the way to keep seven kingdoms acting as one. Hmm. Ah, I understand he's too old to come visit himself. I don't blame him, I suppose. To his credit, though, uh, he has enlisted the help of um, Lady Elena to assist in our marriages. Ah, making up for lost time by enlisting the Queen of Thorns, eh? <laughs> eh? Olena! Olena! Find them good ones, eh? Look at them! <laughs> Fighters and fuckers! I can tell! I have a nose for it! And that was every bit raised voice hollering it <laughs> as though she weren't like six or eight feet away, you know. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. I'll, I'll own that uh, the compliment he gave. <laughs> uh, she, for her part, Lady Olena, sitting a few seats away, uh, very pointedly ignores uh, exactly what he said. And she just says, it's not conversation for the dinner table, Robert. Your grace. Uh, like, every bit, like, she would chastise one of her grandchildren. Um, <laughs> Yeah. She does not give a fuck. And For all does. the things <laughs> they grow in High Garden, fucks is not one of them. Yes, exactly. They, the, the ripe fields of the Reach are not they're not seeded with fucks to give. Yeah, they're not known for their uh, fucks. They, <laughs> uh, so we are gonna uh, on on that note. And my assumption is also, Baylor, you're sitting down to eat something uh, or kind of settling yeah. in up at that table? Yeah, I'll okay. settle in for uh, the remainder of this course, but then I'll excuse myself. Sure. Uh, but we've got a few empty seats there at the Veil vale Contingent where the rest of you were sitting. Uh, and we've got an eight uh, that somebody picked. So as most of you are eyeing the king's table uh, with half an ear to King Robert talking to your sister. Um, on the other side of your table, a pair of black leather pants approach. And a chair, a chair gets brazenly hauled away without anyone asking for permission uh, and helping himself to your hospitality. Sir Lynn Corbray has a seat. Uh, and uh, just sits down uh, on the other side of Maya, uh, facing the lot of you, uh, and lazily sprawling back in his chair. Uh, and he's looking at uh, Reyna, uh, because he seems to have settled on her as the eldest in your backwards Dornish way. And like, you can almost see the thought bubble like, I'm going to talk to her instead of the brother, maybe because she's eldest, maybe because it's a way to insult him. So this is a twofer. I'm following the letter of the rules while insulting someone. Um, well, I, was, I, was he, I was wondering if maybe he'd seen her glaring at him. <laughs> and, uh, but he gives uh, Reyna uh, that, that long kind of appraising look. And he goes... Good Eve. I found myself with only my squire for company, and I thought some familiar faces from the Vale might comfort my lonely, grieving heart. He says, while not at all looking at the faces from the Vale. Well, I suppose that's as good a reason as I goes any. to say something Hold that on, stops the yeah. to Raina. Yeah, Raina was talking. I suppose that that's as good a reason as any. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, he says after having already pointedly sat down. Et cetera, et cetera. It was kind of your little brother to keep me company earlier, and perhaps I just 
return the favor and shuffle down table a bit. Uh, did, he bring, did he bring Lady Forlorn? Yes, uh, she is back on his hip now. Yeah, she's never Lady far from him. <laughs> I was just curious. So, how goes the conversation here? Lady Miranda? Maya? How do they look? Uh, Maya has gotten very quiet and kind of tense, like a bird going, oh shit, oh shit, a cat is looking at me, oh shit. <laughs> right? Like, not not like pointed abuse victim way, just very like, like, uh oh, you know, like very kind of tense and quiet. Uh, the Lady Miranda, he is still a gallant knight of the veil. Um, so she leans over uh, to kind of reach uh, past uh, Maya and offer her hand, which he delicately just kind of takes and gives a little shake, um, going through the motions of, of, you know, gallantry and politeness. Uh, and then Maya, when she returns to like lean back in her seat again, uh, is very pointedly leaning to face uh, Sir Lynn, but leaning back in her chair towards Lucaris. Uh, so she is maintaining proximity on Luke while politely giving her attention to Lynn Corbray. I was sorry to hear the news of your brother. And I'll extend our condolences. That's very kind of you to say, he says after a pointed, disbelieving half-smile. I'm sure that the rest of House Corbray is just as concerned with your ailing cousin as you are concerned with the loss of my younger brother. Uh, there is an anger on Luke's, Luke's face that he's having trouble hiding. Great. <laughs> I don't, I'm not worried about Adam now. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what sort of face is, is he tr having trouble hiding? I'm curious. Anger. Oh, say. Anger, disdain, violence, oh, goes, emotion. Yay. Um. <laughs> but he's holding his tongue. All right. Better. And sword. Don't do that. <laughs> 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 I can appreciate the similarities there. Have you found this week to be a profitable one, then? I've done well enough for myself and have a few more wagers riding on the melee. Mm, I not trust us. Go ahead, Rusty. I trust I'll see you there, he says with a quirked eyebrow that leaves it unclear whether he expects you to be taking part or watching from the sideline. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Reyna, uh, House Cobray has had some difficulties with uh, funds, but I will be there in melee. Uh, some difficulty with thugs? Uh, funds, uh, uh, money, quite oh, funds. Okay, I just I misheard thugs. That was like like no, that was you guys. Uh, okay, <laughs> that, that, that that was our problem. Uh, that was the data problem, really. Um, well, I will definitely be there. I... That was definitely intended as a subtle insult. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't subtle. I got you. I just didn't hear. Ah! Well, an insult. Period. I will definitely be on the field. Um, are you... Who are you... Who are your compatriots? Or who have you chosen to take to the field with at the melee? Uh, mostly Veilman. Uh, Bronze Yawn, of course. And uh, his eldest, Andar. Uh, Sir Vardis Egan will be joining us. Uh, oh. My squire, uh, and uh, and then uh, 
Lord Aram's squire as well, Hugh. We're not sure, uh, perhaps the youngest Royce boy. He may be looking to redeem himself after his mishap with your oaf. Ah, uh, I mean to say. I, it was my understanding that he is going to the wall to take the black after this. Uh, indeed. So he may want to thrash some craggy featured hairy half giant as practice before he gets to the north. Well, he probably shouldn't approach the king. <laughs> what helps your sword play is more practicing your tongue play. Circle Ray. Oh, not to worry, pretty young man. I've plenty of practice with both. Uh, and his eyes slide off of you towards your younger brother across the room. At that point, Sorry, Luke looks slowly to Adam and looks back. And there's a there's, there's an acknowledgement there, but not a pleasant one. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of tongue play, Maya... Uh, and he just brazenly reaches towards Maya's plate uh, and, like, plucks a piece of meat. Thank you. I thought I'd get a taste for myself. You forget what yourself, What is her sir. face? What is her expression? <laughs> um, she just kind of stammers out... Uh, 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 of, of course, sir. If you've come Add over this here. Add this my shit list. Hold on. <laughs> He's got to open that document and tap, tap, tap. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Go, go ahead, Reyna. If you all like him over here to attempt to intimidate... Ladies and bastards, mayhap you should keep moving. Ooh, oh. Oh. I thought it was just your squire and the Riverlander. I'm sorry, Lucaris, I thought you were a full Nymerian. You weren't insulting him. <laughs> that time I did. I called him a bastard in case you missed it. Uh, I didn't insult poorly, Dennis. I didn't insult that needs not be replied to, sir. And yet, um, the melee should prove quite interesting, should it not? Oh, I'm certain that it shall. Well, then, it would seem I may have worn out my warm welcome, unless I'm misreading the room. You Dornish folk and your customs are a little queer to me. It's odd that you've worn out the welcome to such close friends as these other members of the Vale, but when oh, one's manners are as rude as they, um, that happens. Uh, so it does. Well then, here's to another clash of cultures tomorrow. Perhaps the Dornish will put up a bit more of a fight than the last time. Uh, Luke specifically <gasps> grabs one of the house wines and raises it in a mock salute. To your health, Sir Corbray. To tomorrow's challenge, sir. Oh. Ladies. Uh, and he returns oh, the mock salute. Was... You get the feeling mock salutes are all he knows how to do. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, like, he's like, sure, whatever. Um, that was so, yeah. he... uh, Looks a little out of his depth here, but he's he also saunter very away. <laughs> that was such a good comeback. That was, oh, I wish I'd been there for does does he saunter or sidle away? Uh, yes. Further? Yeah, he he stands up. He stretches, kind of cat like, uh, and it's not the same like sachet that Marita Lucas did. Uh, but yes, he just idly saunters back over towards his seat, which again is like ten feet away. Like it's not like it's real long. It's just the principle of the thing. It's symbolic. <laughs> Three feet way. away, we're staring at each other. I, I take my hand out from under the table and I, where it's clenched, like. Push to talk. Push to talk. I was holding my knife in there under the table and I just, like, put it down. <laughs> well, 
How is that for a main course, everybody? Because uh, with, the, with the end of the goose stuffed with pigeon, stuffed with breadcrumbs, stuffed with mulberries and pecans, etc., etc., we are just about at six o'clock. So before we move on to the cleanser and the second main and the dessert, we are going to have to call it a break for two long weeks, I'm afraid. Whoa. Because that is how linear chronology works. But I hope everybody had a good time once again joining us for the fighting words and the flirting words and the goading of the highborn and all of that fun stuff that we get up to here. We will see how the feast goes. We may just wrap up the feast next session, and then we've got the melee to look forward to when several people here at the feast are going to be backing up some talk. So we're going to see how that works <laughs> Well, I mean, it's just more just sharpening existing ones. Uh, really, it's just dusting them off. He is not and... a friend. He's not a friend of Dorn. <laughs> I mean, he is not really, an enemy of the people. <laughs> he was being really, he was being plenty friendly with your baby brother. I don't know why you could yeah. take that in the wrong way. That wasn't friendliness. And there's still that lingering look uh, of Luke's to Adams. Like, uh, what's going on exactly? So yeah, when there's Adam lots. Noticed to... that they're talking to him. Lots to talk about <sighs> in a few weeks. Got some good family talks to have about. Just normal family shit. Like, hey, stop trying to suck off our blood enemy. You know, just normal <laughs> stuff like that. Just normal everyday dinner time I, conversations. I hope me stabbing him does not affect your uh, personal life. Uh, I'm, I'm so, not. Uh, ah, not, sorry, not sorry. Adam is a hungry bottom, and he's gonna get what he wants. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so on top of all that. On top of the palate cleanser, the second main course, and desserts, there will also be some dancing in two weeks. And we will see just who gets paired up with whom, because I know I've got a list picked out, and we will see how some things go. So I hope everybody's had a good time coming back to Westeros with us, hanging out in the Red Keep, watching some stuff escalate, watching some tension mount prior to the melee, and if any of my sisters want to uh, befriend a man, I have quarters nearby if you give me enough coin. coin. What? <laughs> He's going to charge you for getting to use his quarters here in the Red Keep. No! Well, <laughs> I kid, of course. They're free of charge. Okay, that's good. <laughs> just, just like his sisters are. Because they're free <laughs> women. They can do what they want. He's not pimping an anybody. No, I said he's not pimping anybody out. It's a compliment. You're Everybody having fun. Hopefully, <laughs> viewers are having fun too. And we will see you all back here in two weeks' time as we continue uh, with the trials and tribulations of uh, House Nymerian making their way in the world today. Which takes everything you got. Oh, Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you in two Bye, weeks. guys. Bye. Bye, Rick.